uh, good morning. In this video we're going to look at some exempl exemplar materials for the English language IGCSE C. Um, so the section A reading, um, the, you can see the um, links underneath the video, um, but here they are on the screen as well. Read the following text carefully and then answer section A in the question paper. So we'll just read the, the text quickly um, and then you can read them at your leisure um, uh, and then we'll look at the model answers. So there's some model answers that give you some ideas how to answer these questions, okay, uh, which is really helpful. So um, first impressions of an Englishman in New York. The writer, in this passage, the writer describes his first experience of New York. In May of 2011, I fulfilled one of my many travel goals by traveling to New York for the first time. With a place to stay, brackets, a friend's apartment in Manhattan, no less. I was looking forward to seeing what the city was really like. Despite a rather rough flight over and the first signs of jet lag kicking in, my spirits were as high as the skyscrapers poked through the clouds as we descended. So then there's um, a, a side heading, the approach to JFK. The views on circling the city and coming into land at JFK Airport are spectacular. Having flown over Long Island, I could clearly make out several of the most famous buildings of central New York. So lots of detail. As I was right at the back of the plane, I decided not to stress about getting out quickly. I took my time and was the last to disembark, which was a mistake. I was then at the back of the queue when we'd passed through the sweaty tunnels on the way to the immigration hall from the first person. Again, um, a, a, another um, side heading the immigration process. So it was in short paragraphs. I could see it was going to take time as the human content of our 747 was waiting in line in front of me. There was little to do except wait. Short sentence. We were at least entertained by a video selling the delights of New York on a continuous loop on one of several television screens. The actual passport check procedure was quick and painless, although I did find it unusual to be both photographed and fingerprinted. The view on the way from the airport. Terminal 7, which British Airways use at JFK, is a little run down but small and manageable. The first sight to greet me on exiting at the Badger Hall, Baggage Hall was of Starbucks and a McDonald's. Years ago, this would have seemed like a welcome to the USA in itself, but these days it could be practically anywhere in the world. But then he's giving us details, isn't he, and name checking. With both signs and an announcement warning not to use dodgy taxis but go to the taxi office, I took the hint and found a classic yellow cab to take me into Manhattan. Again, names. On the way, I noticed how most Americans drive the same kind of cars as we do in Europe, although there are a few big Jeeps, a couple of stretch limousines, and a lot of those vans favoured by FBI agents running surveillance. But the real wow moment was when I saw that iconic Manhattan skyline as we crossed the Queensborough Bridge with the sun setting. I had arrived, so you've got ellipses, dot, 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 um, and you've got, um, it's quite upbeat, isn't it? The tone is sort of upbeat. So skyscrapers. I woke early the next day in my host's apartment. The view from the living room was certainly not quite what I was used to being 29 floors up as opposed to one. The midtown location was amazing right round the corner from the UN building and surrounded by even taller buildings. I think this is the first and most obvious sign one who's just arrived in New York that they keep looking up all the time. Now it was time to check out the city in daylight, dash, with the benefit of a few hours sleep. So as I've said before, use dashes, um, use brackets, use eight types of punctuation. The feeling of being on a film set, so he's he's done this into bite-sized chunks, hasn't he? I think it's on a website. So it's really easy to read. The target audience is travellers. It's not highly um, highly technical or highly educated. It's just a chatty travel log. That's the genre. The feeling of being on a film set. This is a classic cliche that most people who have been to New York talk about, Dash. But like a lot of cliches, it's also true. The big apple is, of course, the backdrop to countless movies and TV shows. You'll find something that you recognise or which looks familiar around most corners. So he's directly addressing the audience with um, you. You'll see those yellow fire hydrants, newspaper vending machines and walk, don't walk signs. So there's a list there, so it's different sentence structures. The sheer level of noise on the streets. When you walk along the busy streets of New York, it's like someone turned the volume up. So it's, it's sound. It's also, to my ears, amazing how people just do not care who hears their conversation, whether in person or on the phone. You get a fascinating insight into the private lives of New Yorkers in the form of 10-second clips as, they, as you pass and they move out of range. 
again, direct address. So he's, he's very conscious of um, engaging the audience. Finally, it's only you get high up that you fully appreciate how mind-blowing New York architecture really is. Okay, so he name checks both the Empire State Building and the Rockefeller Center offer fantastic views, and both are recommended. Next time I'm planning to save my money for a helicopter ride over the city, semicolon, yeah. So another type of punctuation. That would be the ultimate way to see New York. Have my plane left the tarmac for my return flight. I was already thinking about coming back. New York lived up to Dash and in fact exceeded Dash my expectations. It should be on everyone's list of places to visit. So that's um, a solid piece uh, just talking about uh, by some individual who went to New York from the first person. Um, and uh, it's very factual, isn't it? Um, giving advice, really. Text two, uh, notes from a small island. This is from a book. Um, in this passage, the writer describes his journey to Dover in England. Now, uh, this is by a guy called Bryson. He's a very gifted writer and very witty, and, and the tone will probably be humorous. In the morning, I breakfasted early, settled my bill, and stepped out to another promising day. Clutching my inadequate little map that came with my ferry ticket, I set off in search of the ferry terminal. On the map, it looked to be quite nearby, practically in the town centre, but in reality, it was a good two miles away at the far end of a bewildering wasteland of oil refineries, derelict factories and acres of waste ground strewn with old girders and piles of jaggy concrete. Lovely long sentence with lift. Painting a picture. I found myself squeezing through holes in chain link fences and picking away between rusting railway carriages. That's nice alliteration with broken windows. I don't know how other people get to the ferry at Calais, but I had the distinct feeling that no one had ever done it this way before. So that's humour, isn't it? And all the while I walked, I was uncomfortably aware, Dash, actually in a whimpering panic, Dash, that's the emotive language, that the departure time was drawing nigh and that the ferry terminal, though always visible, never actually seemed to get any closer. Nice long sentences. Eventually, after dodging across a dual carriageway and climbing up an embankment, I arrived breathless and late, looking like someone who just survived a mining disaster and was hustled aboard a shuttle bus by an officious, that means someone who gives orders, and is an official, officious woman. So nice vocabulary, Latinate vocabulary. I boarded the ship thus firing freely, and again Latinate vocabulary, complex vocabulary. With a certain disquiet, I'm not a good sailor, I freely admit I get sick on a rowing boat full stop, nice short sentence, but short and long sentences. The boat was crammed with people, all of English. I spent the first quarter of an hour wandering around, wondering how they got there without getting filthy. Inserted myself briefly into the mayhem that was the duty-free shop, and as quickly found my way out again. Strolled around the cafeteria with a tray looking at the food, searched for a seat among hordes of dementedly lively children, and finally found my way onto the breezy deck where people with blue lips and dancing hair were trying to convince themselves that because the sun was shining they couldn't possibly be cold. So again, very funny, and that's a rule of three, it's a list, isn't it? Um, dementedly lively children, found my way onto the breezy, breezy deck where people with blue lips and dancing hair were trying to convince themselves. Um, so yeah, it's a rule of three. Before long, the white cliffs of Dover rose from the sea and began creeping towards us. In no time at all, it seemed we were sailing into Dover Harbour and clumsily nuzzling up to the dock, that personification of the boat. Because they don't really clumsily nuzzle, do they? They're not alive. I was eager to see Dover again after all these years. I strode into the centre along Marine Parade with a small cry of pleasure, emotive language, despite the shelter I'd slept in those many years ago. So he's re revisiting old sites. It was covered in about 11 more layers, layers of vile green paint, otherwise unchanged. The view out to sea was likewise unchanged, though the water was bluer and more glittery than when I'd last seen it. But everything else looked different. Where I recalled there being a row of elegant Georgian terraces, there was now vast and unbecoming, which is horrible looking, brick apartment block. Town Wall Street, the main uh, through road to the west, was wider and more menacing with traffic than I remembered. And there was now a subway to the town centre, which itself was unrecognisable. So he's also doing names, but not some names, yeah. The main shopping centre had been pedestrianised, and the market square had been turned into a kind of piazza with show-off paving and the usual array of cast iron trimmings. The whole town centre seemed uncomfortably squeezed by busy, wide roads, of which I had no recollection. I suppose that's because everyone's driving to the coast to get a ferry or Eurotong and to, to escape. And there was now a big tourist attraction called the White Cliffs Experience, where I presume from the name you can discover what it feels like to be 800 million-year-old chalk. That's a joke. 
I didn't recognise anything in the short centres. The trouble with English towns is they are so indistinguishable from one, one from another. They all have a Boots and W. H. Smith and Marks and Spencers. You could be anywhere, really. I plodded distractedly through the streets, unhappy that a place so central to my memories was so unfamiliar. Then on my thir third grumbling pass through the town centre on, on a lane I will say I'd never walked before, I came across this cinema still recognisable despite refurbishment. Everything suddenly became clear. Now that I had a fixed point of reference, I knew precisely where I was. I strode purposely 500 yards north and then west. Dash. Now I could always have done it blindfolded, Dash, and found myself square in front of Mrs. Smith's establishment. It was still a hotel and looked substantially unchanged, as far as I can remember, except for the addition of a parking area in the front garden, a plastic sign announcing mm -hmm. colour TVs and ensuite bathrooms. I thought about knocking at the door, it didn't see much point. The dragon-like Mrs. Smith must be long gone. Must be long since gone, dragon-like, hyphen. She couldn't possibly have coped with the modern age of British guest houses with their ensuite bathrooms and coffee making facilities and people having pizzas delivered to their rooms. Cheered by this thought, I strolled up the Folkestone Road to the station and bought a, a ticket for the next train to London. So yeah, it's an, it's another type of traveller here. He's slightly grumpy, he's kind of the opposite tone actually, he's a bit disappointed at what he's found. So the one um, is text was adapted from thought, first impression of Englishman in New York by Andy Higgs. And it's a website, grownuptravel.com guide. Um, and the other one is um, Notes from a Small Island, which is a book. Right, so um, I just keep a tab open and, and, and look at the, these, okay? And I, we'll go and now look at the um, answers. So, read text one of the extracts booklet from First Impressions of an Englishman in New York, which is about a, a man's first experience of New York. In line 17 to 22, the writer describes the immigration process. Identify one point the writer makes about the experience. And so the student res the response is, he found it unusual to be both photographed and fingerprinted, so he gets one mark. Student response B, they were photographed and fingerprinted. He gets one mark. Student response C, the experience of the passport was painless and quick. They get one mark. Student's response D. One point the writer makes about the experience is that it could be that they're going to take time. As the entire human content of the simple thing was was standing in front of me. They got um, one mark as well. Exemplar question two. In, in lines 23 to 34, the writer leaves the airport and travels into the city. State one thing the writer sees. So you could say Starbucks, McDonald's, warning signs about dodgy taxes, yellow taxes, same type of cars as in Europe. Same type of it, same. Some vehicles are different. Jeeps, stretch limousines, vans. The skyline in Queensborough Bridge. So these candidates, Starbucks, they get one mark. Iconic Manhattan skyline. They're given one mark. The writer saw a Starbucks. They get one mark. The writer saw a Starbucks. They get one mark. So they can all do those easy, easy first two questions. So look at question three. This is worth ten marks. This is a hard one, isn't it? Explain how the writer presents his impressions of New York. You should support your answer with close reference to the passage, including brief quotations. So they're suggesting, this is the mark scheme, it's worth 10 marks. Um, reward responses that demonstrate how the writer presents his impressions of New York. Responses may include the use of descriptive language to create a sense of unfamiliarity, not quite what I was used to, being 29 floors up, so descriptive language. Repetition to create a sense of wonder, so he uses repetition, doesn't he? So it's all of my recipe as well, isn't it? The ingredients, descriptive language, um, repetition. The Midtown location was amazing. It's also, to my ears, amazing, so he uses amazing twice. The use of typical New York features, those yellow fire hydrants, newspaper vending machines, walk, don't walk. Excitement caused by familiar locations, the feeling of being on a film set. The use of simile to describe the level of the noise, it's like someone turned the volume up. So yeah, 
imagery, notice any imagery they use. He's surprised by uninhibited private conversations of the pedestrians, fascinating insight into the private lives of New Yorkers. The way he makes the building sound impressive, how mind-blowing New York architecture really is. He uses emotive language, extreme language, exaggerated. Is it really mind-blowing? He thinks it is. So it's exaggerated, it's emotive. Again, you know, it's one of the ingredients of the recipe is, um, if you want to do a persuasive piece, is to use facts and emotive language. He's trying to persuade us to go to New York, isn't he, in a way? So you could look at De Forestry, actually. Direct address, alliteration, anecdote, he's got all of those. Um, he's got facts. Um, he's got, uh, I don't know if he's got the rule of three. Have a look. He encouraged, the, he's definitely got imagery. He encouraged the reader to share his experience. New York lived up to and in fact exceeded my expectation. It should be on everyone's list of places to visit. So he's giving us a sort of an order there. The use of a colloquial informal language engages the reader. Wow, a big apple. He creates a sense, strong sense of location through the use of proper nouns, Manhattan, Empire State Building. The use of first person, which I talked about, creates a sense of realism, immediacy, so those are the examples. So you, you, you're looking at including brief quotations. So should we have it what people put? So this one's worth six marks. The writer finds it strange where people walk and don't care what other people think about them. For example, it's amazing how people just do not care who has their conversation. This way the writer presents the character of the city by describing the personality of people that live in New York. He tells us his impressions, but it also tells us about the city. Also, the writer uses, the writer uses descriptive detail. For example, a few big jeeps, a couple of stretch limousines. This helps us to create an image as well as understand how the streets of New York are full of cars. He wants us to see what he sees. Yes, that's true. He might want to put back the list there, really. It's, it's a list, isn't it? It's descriptive, but it's also a list. There's lots of detail. In addition, the writer uses adverbs to show his impressions. For example, the views when circling the city and coming into land at JFK Airport are spectacular. This makes us understand how impressed he is from the views of New York City before even going into the centre. This shows us how amazing New York is. I'm not sure that's an adverb, that's an adjective, but anyway. Also, the writer talks about the services of New York. For example, there is little to do except wait. This way the writer shows us how good the services are and that they listen to your demands immediately. Hmm, I think they're losing it a little bit. Something I also noticed is that the writer tells us about the architect. For example, the view from the living room was certainly not quite what I was used to being as 29 floors up as opposed to one. So it's comparison he uses, doesn't he? But they haven't pointed that out. This shows that the buildings are very high where a lot of effort was needed. Hmm, okay. Loses a little bit towards the end. This is a level three response to the question on the writer's impression of New York as it demonstrates clear understanding and has appropriate examples. The comments are not sufficiently developed to move it into level four. You need a closer analysis of language and structure. Yeah, how does it begin? How does it end? How does he use direct address? You know, use DeForesty to help you. Or my recipe that, you know, gives you the 17 points that writers use to, 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 to wow us. Just, just apply those. So, you know, is he using emotive language? Is he using varied sentence structure? Um, is he doing long lists? Is he starting in one point and then moving to another? What's he doing? Anyway, let's look at the next one. Student response B. Explain how the writer uh, presents his impressions of New York. You should support your answer with close reference to the passage, including brief quotations. This one, again, is worth six, I think. Yeah. There's not enough of, you know, De Foresty or, or my recipe, is there? The writer presents... Uh, so it's how does he use language and rhetorical devices? The writer presents his impressions of New York by including that everyone can understand someone that is new, just come in new, just come New York, as they keep looking up all the time. We can understand how fascinated the writer is, as he's never see, saw such huge, tall buildings, brought an image of how tall a building is, is created. So it's clunky English, okay? So it's hopeful that you've got six, even though it's clunky English. Moreover, the writer's, uh, by the use of metaphor, the writer, by the use of metaphor, presents his impression about the architecture, which, which he calls mind-blowing. We can see 
I suppose that is a, yeah, mind zone is a metaphor. We're not really going to mind blow your mind, is it? So that's a good point. We can see how impressive buildings and skyscrapers are. So that's a good point. It makes the reader create an image of how they may be like and wonder what makes them such at, out of this world. So, you know, clunky, not correct, totally, but he's still getting a fair mark. Metaphors are, metaphors are used in order to make the reader not bored. Create, and, and, you know, the writing, the, 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 the spelling is also a little bit dodgy. But this exam doesn't actually penalise you, like AQA, so heavily on spelling. Create them a clearer image and understand better what the reader tries to say. For example, how magnificent... Walls buildings were. Mm. So it's not really a metaphor there. Doesn't really understand what a metaphor is, do they? Which is an image. But anyway, so losing marks there, not losing, but not getting any. In addition, the read because we are only positive mark. In addition, the read uses sensory language. In fact, exceeding my expectations. The reader can walk into the, the writer's shoes and feel the excitement New York uh, gave him. Okay, yeah, it gives him a feeling and that's sensory. Not only is he surprised, not only it was as good as he expected, but it was even better. It gives the reader and writer a feeling that New York for sure worth the struggle and worth, worth visiting. So, yeah, not brilliant in your uh, grasp of how to phrase things. Hmm. The writer also separates, that's a spelling mistake, the passage into categories by the use of subheadings. The style in which the passage is written is more eye-catching. The skyscrapers, the feeling of being on the film set, it shows how impressed the writer was about the specific topic. also wants to emphasise how the skyscrapers were and what other feelings in being on a film set. Interesting things that would never leave his me memory. So again, a bit clunky, that sentence structure. I feel maybe he's a second language English speaker. Very fluent, but not 100%. Anyway, so, you know, this is very hopeful uh, for you because um, you can actually learn from this. To sum up, the reader uses, uses positive tone with the right description to show how impressed he was. And at the same time, make the reader impre be impressed too. Should be two double O. You'll find something that you recognise at all, which looks familiar. So, brown. Yeah, so basically, uh, actually I would say that's a direct address. You'll find something. That's what I would label that. Imagine walking in the street and in every corner, find a well-known person or even your role model. Or actors from your favourite show. If this isn't impressive, then what is it? Okay, so adding their little uh, bit there that they weren't really are. That wasn't in the text, was it? This is a response which shows a clear understanding of the way in which the writer shows his impressions of New York, makes appropriate references. The comments on how the writer refers to the architecture are, mel are, well, are made well with analysis of metaphor. Yeah, some of his points on it, metaphor are good. And that's probably why it got six. Slow it down and reread it carefully so you've got an idea. But I strongly suggest you use De or and my 17 points. Uh, Rewatch my video just to remind yourself. Okay, next. Which are, so you, you're looking at how to write a good piece and you're seeing how good this piece is. Student response C. So what does this one get? Let's have a little look. It's 8 out of 10. And then there's D, which looks like... So I only got four out of ten. I think oh, I don't really like that one. So I only got four out of ten. It's too difficult to read. We'll do the eight out of ten one. The writer presents his impressions of New York with the use of long sentences. For example, the first sight to greet Anna McDonald's. Dot 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 Anna McDonald's. So lovely long sentence. Using this long sentence, it made me comprehend just how exciting New York was. The first thing to come into into was due of the world's biggest tertiary sector firms emphasizing just how developed and service-based economy New York has. Okay, so that's a good point. McDonald's is, you know, is, is a service sector firm um, and they're world global, aren't they? Furthermore, the writer used descriptive writing to show us his impression of New York. For example, on the way, notice how most Americans drive 
running to veil dot 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 running to veil and with this there was this way it made me visualize the roads of new york i felt like i was really st really standing there and and staring at the amazing limousines and big jeeps i suggest you shouldn't really do dot dot just do um short quotes and break them up and break them down um not the dot 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 short quotes but you, they have got the right quote additionally the writer uses powerful words double l not right for for example, it doesn't look clearly like capital, wow moment, for example, wow moment. It made the passage come to life. Okay, good point. I felt just how excited the writer was when he saw the iconic Manhattan skyline. It emphasised, good point, just how beautiful and amazing and amazing place New York is. So, yeah, you need to have language like it portrays, it emphasises, it describes, or he describes, he portrays, he emphasises, he outlines. You need a, a list of language like that, okay? So he he portrays, he writes, he describes, he exaggerates, um, he creates. Okay, he uses. Also, the writer uses ellipsis. Start wrong. For example, I had arrived. Dot dot dot. Yeah, good. So he notices that, and that's true, and that makes it sound really exciting. So this technique, it made me the reader take part in his story. His story. And think about what will happen next. It let it left it upon my mind to visualize just how amazing his experience was when he crossed the Queensborough Bridge. In addition, the writer uses punctuation to help him describe his journey. Describe the feed the wrong way around. For example, it's also to my ears amazing, person or on the phone, using brackets, it gave me the, the inside thoughts of the writer. Yeah, yeah. So he's, uh, this person is clever. They you they're unpicking um, the punctuation use, and that's actually a really good way to look at it. It's look how does this writer use um, the pu punctuation, and that's what I said to you, isn't it? S in both of those is sentence structure, um, complex it is in Deforest is, is is similes, statistics, and sentence structure. I go on and on about using different sentence structure and eight types of punctuation. So. This writer, this little student, is actually choosing the punctuation to talk about, which is a, not a bad idea. Using brackets, it gave me the inside thoughts of the writer. It had some amazing, just how amazing, not care who he is, it, it, he had found it amazing, just how people would not care who he is, their conversation, yeah. Clunkily written. You can only lose a certain amount of marks in this paper for um, spelling, punctuation and grammar. And clearly, on the first section A, you're not losing marks for the myelin in. Lastly, it uses first-person narration, for example, I could see good. Start firstly with narration. That's a really obvious point, isn't it? And the tone, you know, look at the language, wow. And the other one uses grumpy language. Using this, it made the passage and the feelings of the writer come to life and visualise his actions. Good. So it does show a thorough understanding with references which support the, po the points that are made. The response engages with the writing, looking at specific techniques, which is DeForest D and my 17 points. You can go and look at my template video if you've forgotten it. Uh, this is how people write effectively using those points all the time. There's no new points, they're just using those. So you're looking at what the writer in the exam is using. A little more perceptive, don't the points would have taken this response into level five? Yes, it would. So they could have, you know, um, talked about imagery perhaps or developed a little bit more about their very good points. Um, uh, you know, they could have talked perhaps about um, direct address. They talk about direct address. Very solid though, eight out of ten to be honest. So reread it again and just see what aspects of my template and the forest you can see in it. You're just trying to find a mnemonic, some way, some some tips to actually uh, write about these things. Okay. Yeah, lists. Lists are really great. Descriptive adjective or use is really great to discuss. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and the informal language, trying to make it all sound enthusiastic. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. 
I'm not going to read student response D. You're welcome to do it if you can actually do it. You can slow it down and read it, stop it. Hard to read. I was an examiner for 17 years. Pity me, I had to read this sort of stuff. It's worse when it's online as well. Okay, you might want to read what the 4 out of 10 answer is. Um, anyway, so and next time um, I'm, I'm going to do another video where we look at exemplar question uh, 4, where we, we focus on notes from a small island. All right, so I'm going to split it into two so it's easier to upload. I hope you found that helpful. Learn from it. I'm sure you will.